Hello, and welcome to the Stream of Chaos. My name is Art, and I will be your Keeper of Arcane Law for this session of Call of Cthulhu. I'm so excited. <laughs> Today, we are going to be beginning a brand new scenario from the Nameless Horrors sourcebook. You can get your own copy of Nameless Horrors from chaosium.com. You can also find all of our VODs on the Chaosium YouTube channel, and we stream live every Friday at 3 p.m. now Pacific, I believe, on Sounds Twitch. Right. <laughs> uh, finally, I'd like to thank Roll20 and Sirenscape for being great tools which we use to improve our games. So, if we're all sitting comfortably, then uh, let's begin. And before we kick off, for everyone watching today, I do want to give a couple of quick content warnings. This scenario is predominantly about societal horror, so people with power doing horrible things to people without it, uh, so just keep that one in mind. Uh, we are likely going to be touching on the topics of physical and mental abuse, and there may be some animal harm off screen. If either of those two things aren't for you, then you might want to uh, check back in on this later, but if, uh, if that's all good, then welcome to the show. So let's begin. A bluebird flits across a sky almost clear enough to share its name were it not for the pulled cotton clouds just above the horizon. It's late afternoon on Tuesday, February the 28th, and the air is crisp with the last dusting of winter. Below us, the small town of Stowell, home to some 4,100 souls, comes into focus. Our bluebird glides across the sturdy square bank building, all wood panelling, gleaming brass, and deep industrious green. It darts through the quiet church towers before sweeping down Main Street, past the steakhouse with its worn leather benches and checkerboard floors, past the sweet shop, the general store, and the diner, where the heavenly scent of syrupy pancakes mixes with the clove and sandalwood of the barber shop next door. Past the ancient school hall, whose bell is just now gifting its rambunctious wards freedom, our bluebird weaves through the tree-lined streets. Tidy whitewashed cottages hug their yards in neat picket fences, neighbours greet each other by name, and gaggles of children scatter at the careful approach of a car. Stowell is a perfect town. Something has gone very, very wrong. We pick up our scenario as the four of you begin to collect uh, at one Wesley Frost's house. It's a little bit outside of the main center of town. Jim, would you like to introduce yourself and your character, please? Absolutely, very happy to. I am Jim, coming at you from a new in-progress uh, backdrop. Uh, something's been very, very uh, in development for a while. But today, I am playing uh, Wesley Frost. I am a kind of a boring guy, which is why I've got my real-life glasses to use as my being a boring guy. I'm a bank teller and you can invest your money with me because there's nothing cool more cool than fiscal <laughs> responsibility uh have you opened a checkings account recently anyway this is the vibe i'm a very proud of my house uh happy to have the the gang together and uh even though there's some weird stuff going on i'm still probably keeping a little bit of a positive attitude yes the gang is a, is a very good uh, reminder because you all uh went to school together you're all the same age um, who do you think out of the remaining three would be relatively prompt on arrival? Well, from the the loose descriptions I have, I understand that we've got somebody who is uh, used to showing up on time every Sunday to the church. So if I had to guess, it's probably going to be them. Wonderful. Alex, would you like to introduce yourself, your character, and uh, give us a brief description as you make your way into Wesley's house? Uh, hi, I'm Alex. I'm playing Eloise Bircher, uh, the local school teacher, uh, and God bother about town. Uh, there is nothing usually to worry about in this town because we are a good, pious people. Most people do go to church every Sunday. Uh, our Reverend Fitzgerald is a is a magnificent uh, Reverend most of the time. 
Uh, but I firmly believe that the good Lord will wash away all of our problems. But that's not to say that we can't lend a hand, which is sort of what I'm doing at Wesley's house as I kind of waddle up the driveway, uh, making sure that my, uh, my, 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 my flat shoes, my little flat belly flats are not, um, are not particularly good for walking across town. Wesley lives a little bit out of town, but I've made sure that, um, you know, I, I took a moment in the shade on my way up the path to make sure that I wasn't, um, looking unseemly or anything like that when I arrived. Uh, redid my hair in its extremely tight bun, uh, which gives me the look that I might actually almost be smiling. <laughs> I love that. And just so, because uh, my brain does a thing where occasionally it tunes out, did you mention uh, your occupation in town? I'm the school teacher, yes, yes. What? Thank you. Uh, so you make your way up and are let in by... Now, Wesley, are you a, are you a fussy man? Would you be kind of fussing around as you get ready, ready for your guests to arrive? I think that I, I I did all of my fussing preemptively, and I am I, I like polished all the door handles, and I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm like kind of waiting for people to notice, but I'm not actually a particularly socially adept person. At least I, I've got a couple of gaps. So there's probably you know, like yeah, the door handles polished, there's snacks laid out, but there's also like a very clear underlying paint smell because I repainted everything to make sure it was all, and it, it makes everyone feel quite sick as soon as they step inside. <laughs> Well, talking of uh, paint smell and home ownership, Dave, would you like to introduce your character uh, and tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, g'day, so I'm Dave and I'm playing Fred Schenk. I am the local barber in town, a fairly happy-go-lucky kind of guy. You know, it's a small town, he doesn't have lofty goals, but they've all kind of been met. He's a recent homeowner. Uh, so he's bought a place for himself as well with the help of a bank loan from his uh, trusted uh, financial advisor, Mr. Bingham, who helps to run uh, the bank. Uh, except his confidence and, and uh, I guess, you know, happy attitude have been shaken a little recently uh, with the calling in of his bank loan. And it's just enough to kind of rattle him. He hasn't been sleeping as well the last few nights, but despite all that, as he arrives at Mr. Frost's home, he has a pleasant smile. He's taking in the morning, has a small like suit, uh, briefcase with himself, his hat, uh, coat over his arm, and is you know smiling to himself. I don't think I have a car. I think I walked here. So just so he, the coat's been taken off, kind of just because he's getting a bit sweaty. He's sort of keeping his mm -hmm. arms down to hide the, the the sweat stains that are beginning to grow. Love that. Thank you. Uh, I will quickly just because in the intro we would say late afternoon so this would be after your shift at work so you oh, yeah. absolutely still can but it is you said morning and i just want to be like it is not in fact morning i want to make sure everyone knows that it is after the school day even better right in that, that case right i've that had a full day of work and i've also walked in <laughs> <laughs> but still smiling yeah hey look things could be so much worse <laughs> <laughs> they're probably okay. about to be. spoilers <laughs> Yeah, talking of so much worse, Jackson, would you like to uh, introduce your character as they are? Uh, I'm, I'm going to say, sort of, you either either you caught up with uh, with Fred and made your way over together, or perhaps you're bounding up a little behind. Uh, yeah, I, th I think uh, I don't mind if Annabelle, who is my character, played by me, Jackson, <laughs> just rearrange that sentence in your own head, um, will happily be running late because um, she may have been writing all morning. Annabelle is an activist extraordinaire. Um, she, she knows that now is the time that uh, women's right to vote has finally been instated. Now is not the time to slow down and celebrate. Now is the time to write to all of your senators, all of your Congress people, mm -hmm. All of your mayors, all of your governors, and uh, yeah, make sure that these rights can be expanded um, without any hesitation or delay. So she's just finished like you know six copies of a letter to uh, no, hold on, how many representatives does? Oh, we don't even know what state we're in. I was trying to get political <laughs> nerdy up in here, but I can't because we're just in small town USA. That's fine. <laughs> um, yes, but anyway, writing letters to all of her representatives and uh, catching up as best she can. Um, activism doesn't doesn't pay unfortunately so you find her at uh, elmer's steakhouse uh waiting tables otherwise but yes on the way to uh to fred's house wesley Wes. fred's house wesley's house also just to help you out jackson there is technically a small town literally a small town in indiana apparently so uh, <laughs> there's like six across the country funny. well interestingly you mentioned your your job 
um, because you you got some unfortunate news about said job this morning. It's true. Which may be why uh, what put you in the mind uh, after talking to Fred about all gathering together. So the four of you find yourself uh, in Wesley Frost's living room. Um, you were brought together by Fred, local barber, lots of gossip, uh, had heard that there were a couple of things not quite going right with the town. Fred uh, has already kindly let us know that his uh, loan for his house is being called in. But the three of you, well, there are other strange things going on. So I will leave it to the four of you to have a little chat. Let's find out what's going on in this sleepy town of Stowell. Um... If I can, uh, Jim, I'd suggest we're set up in like your, I don't know, like comfortable sitting area or something. I think everyone's been seated and I've stood up slightly awkwardly with just a water glass. And although it's only the four of us in attendance, I've given a little rap and I've said, all right, uh, well, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, I, I, you know, we've, we've all been a little while since we've caught up like this and I, I it's on it's a shame it's under well unfortunate circumstances but hey I'd um gotten a bit of a sense that I myself am having some troubles and you know through the grapevine seems like you might as well I thought I'd just get us started here um I, I Mr. Bingham's uh change in attitude recently a little I, I don't know if it's uh just you know, the, the blues heading into, you know, colder seasons or, or what, but, um, yeah, I uh, recently did, um, uh, get in touch that, uh, the, they're looking to recall my loan, and I'm sure it'll all come good, but at the moment, I am looking at being unhoused, uh, which is, uh, deeply unfortunate. I, I tried to get in touch with him, but, uh, no news. He, he he won't even meet with me. Um, I I I just wanted to maybe see if, if if any of you've had similar experiences. Um, just in the town, you know, strangeness, kind of unfortunate events. I, uh, I, oh, I'm oh, so, oh, I'll pass. Sorry. I'll pass to Miss Burnshire. To, to hear that, Fred. That that's. Uh, uh, I'm so sorry. That's terrible. Oh, um, oh look. I don't want to make it about me. You know, <laughs> it's, it's it's fine. It's fine. People have it way worse than me. I have a home I, for I, now, at least. That's good. <laughs> so that's, that's a, fine. That's a that's a, god, a godly sentiment to be to be sure. Um, normally, I would I would suggest speaking to Reverend Fitzgerald about it. But um, well, you were in church the other day. You 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 heard him. Um, I don't really think that qualifies as stranger unusual, of course. I think he's, it's just a bit disappointing to hear. Um, but, but that's I'm, I'm, that's a whole different thing. I'm so sorry to hear it, Fred. Uh, but but no, I. You say you can't get in touch with you, with your with your bank manager. Oh well, I mean, I, sorry. I mean, it really feels like I'm dominating the floor here, which I I assure you was not my intent. But but yes, yes. In the past, he's been very friendly, very agreeable, looking to you know lift up the little man, and I consider myself a little man. Um, but but recently, no, uh, has been avoiding me. Uh, just the you know letter nailed to the door saying uh, pay up or get out. So uh. Right. Ah, yes. If I can say a few words, oh, I uh, think Mrs. Hearn, dominating the floor is ex not dominating the floor is exactly what got you into this position. I think you need to walk into that bank's bank today, if not yesterday. Oh, a, a, a firm knock on the office's door. Walk yourself in there and say, Mr. Bingham, I don't appreciate what you're doing, and we should come to terms. It's not a matter of being demanding; it's a matter of the squeaky wheel getting greased. That is how we should operate. That is how this country operates. It's, it's how this country has always operated, and it's how it's going to keep operating in the in the foreseeable future. Take uh, me, for I... example. Why, well, just yesterday, the head waiter at Elmer's, Mr. Uh, Terame, Felix, Felix, Felix told me my services are no longer required. Turn me away from my shift. Oh. And oh. when I asked for my pay, Anna. he slammed the door in my face. Oh. But that's okay. Oh, Annie. That's okay, because we have a system in place, a hierarchical system, in our, uh, you know, capitalist society, whereby I can then go to his boss and ask for my pay. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. You can come along if you want. Felix, uh, Fred, Fred? Yeah, Fred. Yeah. Fred, you might learn something. Oh, I, I highly recommend it. Oh, I... Annie, gosh, that's, 
I'll, I'll just say quick, quickly, Annabelle, and I'm sorry to kind of contradict you here, but if, if, if Fred does come in, uh, Mr. Bingham's not going to take the meeting and he's going to get put across from me or somebody like me down in the lower levels and we don't have the power to do anything and then we just get shouted at. So, you know, uh, I, I, I agree, but also that um, you're wrong. Oh, well... Mr. Frost, I, I wouldn't want to cause any undue stress for yourself either. Uh, I am very grateful for the services you provided, and, and obviously, um, you know, I, I love my time with the bank all up until the, really the last day or so, where it's kind of hit a bit of a rough patch. But hey, we'll, we'll get through it. I mean, this is this is great. The four of us coming together and throwing around solutions. Sure, there's problems, but you know, when a door closes, windows open. Uh, to, to, well, not the not to quote the reverend directly, but th that's the spirit of it that I'm certainly taking away. Uh, we wouldn't want to be quoting the reverend this week. Uh, talking of windows, just to, to accent, uh, the, the sun is, is dipping quite low against the horizon. You've got long shadows, and um, because Wesley is a little out of town, um, his property is, is uh, beautifully surrounded by trees, and there's one slightly older elm tree outside. Uh, the branches are just scratching ever so slightly against the window as you talk about windows opening, and you just you catch that in the sort of evening breeze that's kicking up. Just some flavour for you. Well, Why wouldn't you quote the, the uh, pastor this week? Uh, Alex's character name, which is Eloise. Eloise. I have notes. Oh goodness, it's it's I uh, compared to the the trials and tribulations that you're, you're both going through. I just. Uh, it's nothing really it's just his sermon this week i mean fred you were there um although i imagine if you were a little bit distracted that might be uh permissible just this week although although normally normally i would say the church is the place you should be listening because you will that is where you will find oh. solutions uh the, the good lord provides if you if you were if you are willing to open your heart to him uh, but this week the reverend was um off form, he he was honestly spouting some nonsense about about um, about terrible things. Uh, very kind of. I've got mine. Uh, pardon my French, but stuff the rest of you kind oh. of vibes. I uh, terrible terrible things. Uh, subjugation and and I I shan't repeat it. Just awful awful things about what? you know. Lambs and lions and us as the lions and I are terrible, terrible things. It, it was on. It was uncomfortable, but I mean, <laughs> most likely here, what 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 I'm getting is a, a Monday blues bleeding into the Sunday. You know, <laughs> like this is this is un this is I, Mr. Bingham might have a bit of a case of the sads as well. But I think um I, I think I think your suggestion of going down there and talking to them. I really, I really think I know, that's kind of why I wanted to get us all together, get us all on the same page, so that we can go to Mr. Bingham, go to the Reverend, go to the head waiter, and have a chat. Meet them as equals. Meet them as members of this town, small town, unknown state, and and say, what's up? What's got you down? You know, what can we do to help? Well, well, while we're talking about you know some of these troubles with authority figures I, I i'll also mention something else just uh, briefly um i was having a conversation with um uh shirley um that's my niece and she was very rude to me when i tried to uh get in get in touch with my sister so um yeah being oh. bullied by your niece Jim? it's not a Wesley? Mess. <laughs> listen how, i'm how very close with child? my sister she got married to a lovely guy donald ferguson uh she took his name i asked if i could too they thought it was weird um uh but you know i just i'm very we're very close okay the uh, child has the child previously been friendly always really nice re really sweet thing i called up my sister as i usually do so we can have a chat at the end of the day and uh in, in, in shirley picks up and just ends up laughing at me when i ask if i can speak to to glenda that's my sister and 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 then hangs up on me after a little bit of back and forth just now i can't get a hold of them at all so yeah weird behavior all around it just seems I like something. I have a question for the keeper, 
as um as uh, Wesley is mentioning all of this, are any of the uh, or his sister or his niece any of the people who I would have noticed at church that the Reverend kind of beckoned over at the end of that terrible terrible sermon and you know the, the people who were listening and didn't walk out and who seemed engaged with it? That's a very good question. Um, Eloise is, we've mentioned, a very... uh, Very pious. Very pious woman. Um, Do you think that she would be paying more attention to to people who are interested? Oh, yeah. But more attention to people who are interested in some questionable rhetoric or would she be the kind of person who goes ah they're not worth my time they're they're obviously misguided i know no. the way eloise eloise definitely wants to make sure all of her neighbors are just as pious as she is um definitely stayed till the end specifically did not some people did walk out noticed that good for, good good job um stayed to the end specifically watching um who 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 else stayed and noted that the reverend did beckon people over at the end of the sermon uh, and happy to make like a retroactive spot hidden or psychology Red or something. my mind. It's almost like we share a brain cell. Um, the one. Go ahead and make me a, yeah, there's Sometimes only one. Uh, we, we share it accordingly. Um, go ahead and make me a retroactive spot hidden and because you are pious and you said you pay attention, I'm just going to make this a regular. First roll is no, no pressure. No. Strong start. Strong no. start. Typical, classic, classic Alex rolls. <laughs> you do know that the Fergusons were at church, you're not sure whether they were in the group uh, that went up afterwards to speak more uh, with the Reverend Fitzgerald. Um, I was on my way out by then. a handful of people who sort of went up, um, perhaps, you know, some looking a little confused, some looking genuinely kind of intrigued, uh, but in terms of catching specific people's faces you're not sure. I will say you did. They were at church, but you're not sure whether or not uh, they were. They left the early and discussed, or whether they stayed to the end and were back and up. Yep, cool. I was on my way out by that point and was a little bit flustered because the content of that sermon just. Hmm. Mm. Um. Lovely. Well, I, 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 I suppose it's, it's, it's. Uh... Do we have a do we have an a, a plan of who we want to approach first? Do we have a do we have a structure we'd like to do? I mean, it's we will we'll go in the morning and then move. A purpose of nothing. What's everyone's luck? <laughs> oh, five, sixty-five. Fifty. Mine is sorry. I'm a little slow. I had uh, uh seventy. Nice. 70? Ah, uh, you, you you don't get a house like this. <laughs> <laughs> End of sentence. <laughs> so, uh, I believe. Don't get a house like this. I don't I get a house like this. Fifty was our lowest. Is that correct? Yep. Low. Sorry. No, no, you're good. Uh, so as you sort of have this thought um, and are mulling over, you realise that um, up to you. Either everyone's run out of of beverages, you need to go make a new one, or you need the bathroom. Oh, no. This is slightly, this is very um, stressful. I, I came here thinking that we were going to be just talking about the, the Reverend's unusual sermon, and instead I'm hearing that, you know, one of my friends is losing losing their home, another one's been fired from their job, another one can't get in touch with, with, with their with their family, and I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little bit, um, a little bit frazzled. I don't really know where to, where, where to direct the loving light of our Lord, so I'm going to go into the bathroom and take a flask out of my jacket and take a little nip. Handleless. <laughs> <laughs> So Eloise uh, exclu- excuses herself. Um, <laughs> just uh, Jim, for, yes. is is your? I'm gonna uh, say that your house is a nice two story, uh, like whitewash, similar Jeepers. to the rest of the whitewash. I'm cottages. moving up in the world. <laughs> it's a, it's a nice it's a nice little two story. Uh, it's a bathroom upstairs or downstairs. Uh let's go. Like two bathrooms, one for guests, oh, one, okay. for, one for James. one for Wesley. <laughs> Okay. Yes! <laughs> Wesley gets a bathroom, baby! It's the millennial this, this is how you make it as a bathroom. I, mean, I love role-playing games. <laughs> the concept of, a, of, a, of an all-American dream white picket fenced house, these are quite large things. Absolutely, there's two bathrooms. So then which one is Eloise going to? Is the guest on the ground? The guest or? one, which yeah, is just downstairs. The guest one downstairs. 
Okay, mm-hmm. wonderful. So Eloise excuses herself um, and makes her way down towards the guest bathroom. Uh, while she is out, do the three of you want to, to say anything else? All right. Well, that seems like enough you know, downer talk for the evening. Why don't uh, Why don't we? I mean, it's a while since we've caught up. Annabelle, what's happening with you? You've uh, been well, up to the, much the outside goes, of work? The fight goes well. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. the fight. Um, the uh, 19th Amendment has just been ratified ah. um, by a total 19, of huh? 22 <laughs> states. We're getting up there. 22? Five We're states. <laughs> 35 states, but we still have work to do in All right. Deepers. Mississippi. Yeah, oh, yes. well, they're, they're yeah, tough down. Wow. I actually 1920s want to... Wikipedia yeah, is really handy, isn't it? All right. Eloise, uh, can yes. you make no, a yeah. listen roll for me? Who? I sure can. Eloise. Eloise. Oh, got it. Ooh. Back to back. Right. So, uh, you can hear the, the, the babbling of conversation uh, as you sort of refresh yourself, just muted through the, the door, take a nip, um, wash your hands, splash your face. Uh, and as you make your Have way mint. back, you can still hear that little bit of wind outside, the, the slight whistle as it comes from underneath the doors and the windows and the kind of scratching. Uh, of branches against the side of the house except it's not just branches there's a scratching almost like nails chitinous Mm -hmm. ones not iron ones Um, and you hear a kind of heavy breathing right behind you Deeply Not today, confused. Satan, and I'm going to keep walking. Right. Um, so you do not make any kind of anything. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to kind of reach into the like, underneath the the high buttoned collar white collar of my shirt and kind of take out my little gold cross and um, if there is like a I'm not going to I'm not going to turn around and face anything. I'm not going to look at anything. Um, I'm but if there and I'm going to start kind of I'm going to uh, if there is like a mirror or anything. Um, I, or a reflective surface, I might sneak a glance, but I don't want to. I don't want to let anything in. All it takes is a moment of weakness. Well, I will say you've given me a lovely little thing. It's a dark hallway. Sure, there's a mirror. As you reach up, as as you go to move to reach up and and grab your cross, um, you glance in a mirror and you can just see in the dimness of the hall the glint of light off eyeballs as a figure lunges at you. Ooh, bad bad combat. Oh, oh, hell really? yeah. Great, <laughs> fun. Uh, so let me just pull up my little character sheet. Uh, for anyone yeah. who is playing along at home, this is the first time I've used Roll20, so we'll have a bit of fun with this. Um, so you are going to get lunged at. Um, cool. Would you like to? Uh, I'll say you are not surprised by this. You are you are aware of the movement. You have caught. Uh, you got me scream success. You absolutely have heard what's going on. You caught a glimpse of this person. Would you like to dodge or a post? Um, I would like to dodge. I would like to yeah, get yeah, out yeah. of the way. Or pull the hidden cap to reveal the needle at the bottom of the crucifix. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think at this point I assume that I've 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 brewed a bad batch of bathtub gin and I'm I'm, I'm having hallucinations. Lovely, uh, oh. amazing. <laughs> oh, so for this one, uh, just because I don't want to give the game away, I'm going to give myself a whisper to keeper on this one. Oh my god! Uh, so you are all this this figure lunges at you and you sort of deftly flatten yourself against the wall. Um, and you see this uh, this figure passes you and goes stumbling a little uh, down the hall. Um, it is a man who is uh, wearing ragged kind of clothing. He's sort of hunched over, um, almost uh, like animalistically. His hair is uh, greasy, and as he like turns his head back to look at you, you can see a kind of almost feral nature to his face. His teeth are like stained 
Um, he's ah. dirt splattered, um, and he just looks at you and goes to lunge at you once more. Can um, I? The three of you who are having a nice little conversation, can you go I ahead would definitely and give me? Absolutely. Can you go ahead and give me listen rolls to see uh, whether or not you oh. enter at this point, or whether he gets uh, another go at all of you? I'm trying to spell Mississippi. I just want to say, I just want to say, work. I was right to say we've still got work to do Mississippi because Mississippi didn't ratify the 19th Amendment until 1984. There's too many oh, S's and P's in that. I misspell it every time. What's okay. that? Yes, it's Fuck me, I'm a chemistry teacher. Cool. Nope. Mississippi. M-I-S-S-I-S. Oh, wow, Amazing. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, you absolutely all at this moment hear Annabelle, uh, sorry, hear Eloise scream, mm -hmm. oh. uh, but this guy is going to get another attempt to lunge at you before ooh, the three ooh. of you <clears throat> have right. a chance to act. Eloise, would you uh, like to dodge or repost? Um, I would like to try and have a lot of Does it just looking at everything I can do? What do you I'm much I better like, You probably but... also need to have an action at this point. So, like, go ahead and yeah. make your. Uh, what would you like to try and do at this point? I, I and wouldn't. Then I wouldn't mind trying time. to. I was screaming going to is just... a free action. Yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> screaming, crying, praising Drinking. the Lord, whatever. Um, free action. I I was going to just eat my flask at his head, but I think <laughs> what I might do is try and splash some gin in his eyes. Like, right. I'm, I'm a chemistry teacher. I've got really, really high chemistry. I've got, I don't just want to be like. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get you to make a throw. I'm really bad at that. Um, Hell yeah. He is just going to lunge at you, so he will be reposting. I'm going to, like, uncap it and I'm going to throw, but it's not going to go well. Yeah, no, didn't think it would. That's okay. All right. Um, so he is going to take a swing at you. Uh, as you do this, um, at this point, he gets close enough that um, you are actually, as he sort of like, ru like lunges at you again and goes to like swing to almost try and grab you, uh, the face comes into a little bit more light and you recognize this man. Um, this is Kenneth McCurdy, uh, who worked as a shelf stacker at the general store, works as a shelf stacker at the general store. Um, he's not someone that you see regularly, but the, the state he's in is definitely confusing. Uh, you get a moment to register this before he goes ahead and tries to grab you. Fortunately not. Um, he goes to wildly swing at you again, and you're able to throw this uh, small amount of bathtub gin, uh, which gets on his clothing and does little to mask the kind of earthy stench of someone who hasn't washed Ugh. in a good uh, couple of days. Um, maybe perhaps a week. Um, at this point... Uh, he is going to take one more attempt to grab you before we go into dexterity order for, for the three of you. I would like to try and dodge and get back into the other room with everybody. Right, go ahead and uh, make a dodge roll for me. Well, well, intelligence gathered, oh, he didn't like start hissing and melting when the... Yeah. When the... <laughs> also when the no. cross was... Oh, obvi uh... Obviously I bless my gin. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. So again, he goes to try and lunge at you, but you are, uh, he careens into a little console table in the hallway, um, knocking off uh, a bunch, a couple of pictures uh, of, of Glenda and the family. Um, you can hear things clattering. Uh, Eloise, you managed to get away and towards the living area where the three of you are. Um, at this point, we'll go to dexterity order. So who have we got? 50. Yeah, I meant to do the other thing, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Ooh, 75. There you, you go, Annabelle. I got a solid 45. <laughs> Amazing. So uh, we have Eloise with, uh, sorry, Wesley with 45, Eloise with 50, Fred with 55, and Annabelle with 70, was it? Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, 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 75. 75? Yeah. Oh my Deepest word. Creepers. You are a speedy bean. Um, all right, Annabelle, uh, top of the round. Or what uh, What would you like to do? Uh, I heard a scream. You did hear a scream, and you can absolutely hear that there is some kind of altercation I, mm -hmm. occurring in the hallway, uh, and Eloise uh, is like 
you the the door she left the door slightly ajar so though you can't exactly see what's going on you can hear that she is making her way back towards I, you and there's something I, going on in the hallway I proceed in the direction of the scream at once right uh right you and... fling open the door and you see the scene in front of you there is a, a man uh, who again you are moderately familiar with Kenneth McCurdy uh looking battered and worn and kind of feral uh, as he is lunging after um, Eloise and trying to grab her. That simply won't do. I will proceed a pace into his face uh, at a glance. Is he uh, inebriated? Smells like liquor. He does smell like liquor. Um, <laughs> would you like to go ahead and make a psychology roll? No, no, no. I, I'll just get up in his face. What was his name? Kenneth? Kenneth McCurdy. McCurdy. All right, I'm just going to get right up into him, like, uh, like you know, just kind of shirt front him and go, mm -hmm. Mr. McCurdy, you were not invited. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, With a name to, trying... like, intimidate him back out the intimidate? door from whence he came. Yeah, just, like, get right up in his face. Amazing. Uh, Annabelle is fearless. An... I've decided. make an intimidate role for me. I'm not going to tell you what difficulty it is. You know, I'm, I'm, I was just rebalancing my stats a little bit with my idea of Annabelle, but uh, she started with Intimidate 65, and I think I'll leave it there. Oh, That's fine. Nice. Ew. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe go, go ahead and pull the trigger on that rebalance. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like that's worth pushing. Right? <laughs> what another like, 29 uh, points in? Okay. Okay, like, okay. I, Annabelle's a waitress, um, and she's an activist. She doesn't she doesn't fear one person in a house with a couple of her friends. This is, I'm sure she's seen worse than this. Yeah. Um, okay. I will just flag. Just yeah. right up in there. I will just quickly flag, because uh, we've done it a lot, Resley. You technically can't push rolls in combat. <laughs> we do let oh, it fly a lot. That's true. But as written. It's not really a combat So I'll leave it to art yeah. to rule, but that's... I am happy to say that combat rolls, i.e. all of you standard hmm. fighty, punchy, brawly, what have you, no. Um... What I that's, that's what I was thinking. Anything that steps in for like I'm trying to de-escalate this because social role, that's a okay because we're not really doing a contest. Anything contested, not so much. This isn't I contested. Heard, this I is just you can you de-escalate this? Um, just in case this goes horribly, terribly wrong, Jackson. Uh, what mm -hmm. what horrible thing do you think will happen if you fail this? Um, aside from being the target of the of the grab, it fucking bites you. I mean, you're you're you you're straight to hell. Fed, so you're gonna be the target, no matter what. Oh, okay. But Heck. What what kind of thing? What are you offering me in return for this push? I don't know. Um, if I don't know what he's up to. A... I don't know what his intent is. Um... Grabby, grabby, lunchy. grabby. If you're looking grabby for a lunchy. suggestion, you could just deny your ability to. Um, yeah, I'll, make give, it I'll give you a free grabs. Like you, you plan yourself, and you are so confident that you don't try <laughs> to do it. So, if it lands, it's landing. Free grab, just hey, for give, you. Give us that some bonus stuff. If that is agreeable, I will Yeah, absolutely. I will if, uh, if you fail this, he's what? gonna get a chance to get hands on you. Uh, he has more than a chance. I am grabbed. Woofed. You are. Uh, mm -hmm. so, I thought he just uh, needed a firm, you know, you firm go hand. Up and you sort of like, you originally go like, you know, back off. He does not seem to register, so you go ahead and you get really close, uh, you know, you, you step forward and you put yourself in the way as he's lunging towards Eloise, um, and as you go to say, back off, uh, your breath is caught as this guy's shoulder hits into your, like, chest and solar plexus Oof. and he oh, bodily, God. like, Oof. lunges on top of you and lands on top of you. You are now Rude. prone on the ground. Uh, prone is not a condition in Call of Cthulhu, but eh, it's still a word. So you are on the ground with this guy, like, on top of you. Um, it seems understood. Like, uh, his fingers have, like, dug into your shoulders. He does not uh, seem like a man who cares too much about the well-being of whoever is in front of him. Um, we will leave you there for the moment. Next up is Fred. Uh, this, I, this is where we need to start. I, I look out in the hallway, and I would recognize Kenneth, I imagine. I've cut his hair before. I kind of know everyone in this little town a little bit. I go, jeepers, Wesley, Kenneth's gone mad. Phone the police. Uh, I'll run in and try and wrestle him off uh, with the intent that you know, we're going to wait for the police to arrive so they can deliver assistance. Uh, can I try and uh, wrench 
Kenneth off Annabelle. Absolutely, certainly. Go ahead and give me a fighting brawl roll. Uh, what is your build? If, oh no. If I'm, I'm, I'm jumping I'm in next very quickly, I was going to say I probably don't go to call the police. I probably rush in and try to help straight as well to, immediately. So I'm happy to provide a bonus die here if that's going to, if we want so to just roll that would be marvelous were it not that uh, Kenneth shares the same initiative as Fred. Never mind. Mm -hmm. I will, I will quite. <laughs> so he will be going next. Kenneth time. All right. I, uh, I'm going to try and grab his ass. Mm -hmm. Come here. Hey, that's a success. Get his ass. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and contest this. He's gonna try and use his fighting skill to, to like push you neck. off. He does not. So you manage to get your arms up and underneath his and like pull him back as he goes to sort of like scrabble um, at Annabelle on the ground. Um, for all intents and purposes, it looks like he was trying to bite her. Oh my um, God. <laughs> which given that you are currently holding onto him, uh, he is going to try and squirm out and do the same to you. I'm yelling like, geez, Kenneth, what the heck? Uh, and trying to push him off and, and away. Uh, kind of more okay. startled by the circumstance than anything else. Uh, I'll dodge. You'll so, dodge? Great. That's the strongest uh, language that we've heard from, from Fred. From anyone in geez, this small Kenneth, town. what the heck? What the heck? I actually... What the what, heck? What the, what the H? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I got H a little carried away there. H-E double hooks, yes, yeah. Uh, what the hell is, is definitely, that's some that's some strong language. And Eloise, normally, in a in a state of mind, you wouldn't particularly nope. like Not anyone invoking the realm of Satan. But in this moment, it kind of passes you by. Yeah, not really focusing on that right now. We've got priorities. Uh, I've made my dodge roll. And failed it. Did your dodge? Lovely. Let's see if he is able to get hands on you. Oh. So, uh, in the Scrabble, you try and push Kenneth away, um, and he turns around as he's sort of, like, wrapped up in you, um, and bites you uh, on the, like, arm as you, as you pull back. Uh, you take three points. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and that's enough to, like, I think, like, it's, like, like, like gotten a chunk of my skin fully. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Ah! What the heck? Um... Pulls away, uh, like, you know, wrenches, like, bites down and pulls a chunk of your skin out, like, biting an apple. Um, oh. And you can see, like, as he pulls back, blood moving, like, dripping down from the side of his, his face is, like, bears his teeth and you can see a chunk of your flesh, like, in between his teeth. Um, as he sort of, like, bites down and begins, like, chewing on it, like, gristle. Um, that is his turn. Uh, it is now Eloise. I think it's Wesley. Uh, no, uh, Eloise is 50 and Wesley's 45. Oh my god, he is. Yeah. Wrong. <laughs> so Eloise is up again. Eloise, you can see uh, Fred just got a chunk of his arm taken out and uh, like Kenneth has moved back again, kind of like crouched down a little and is is gnawing on this. Uh, oh my like god. This, this, this flesh. Um but absolutely there is actually you wouldn't know what look is in his eyes because none no. of them bothered to try and work that out yet so um i might do more. that i am very very bad at like the the combat fighting things i might see if i can see if there is a look in his eyes um see if there's anything that like if he's if he looks actually like crazy crazy if there's anything i could potentially say to de-escalate or to scare him mm -hmm. yeah uh, go ahead and make a psychology roll for me no, 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 no. So far, so what good. You, I should do that. <laughs> you, you try and like get a get a read on this man. Um, what you don't, what what doesn't connect for you, there is a look in his eyes, and if you were able to like pinpoint what it was, you would realize that animal handling would be a better skill uh, to use than intimidation geez. at this point. But um, no. However, you don't do not. block that. He just and I don't seems. Have animal handling, so you know intent on something um eating fred uh we um wesley yes okay um so i i've, I've been sitting here i think i'm the slowest to act because i've just been sitting in my chair kind of shocked this is the first time i've been brave enough as as the archetypal nerd to invite people around to my house <laughs> terribly I, I bolt up i yell sorry at the top of my lungs instinctively and then since this is my house 
uh, and I kind of know where everything is. Would you permit me to grab at like a decorative ornament? Probably something I bought for really cheap, uh, which because I have no taste, and 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 augment a brawl roll with it, so a weapon basically, and just try and clonk him over the head because I'm pretty panicked. Sure, uh, I'm gonna say in my head this is a snow globe, mm-hmm. so you you pick up a, a like a pretty hefty kind of snow globe and you go to try and clonk this guy across the head. Um, now he is there. If you're in a narrow hall. And there are three people <laughs> between you and him. He's mm-hmm. backed off more towards the way he came in. You can see down the hall, the, the door doesn't seem to be open, um, but you can hear the sound of like wind quite loudly. You're pretty sure one of the back windows uh, oh, seems okay. to have been cracked open. Um, but the actual door into the backyard uh, is currently closed. The scratching um, tree with scratching fingers, yeah. So I'm going to, for the sake of this one, uh, you can, if you would like, give me a throw without a penalty. If you want to move through all of the people and try and clobber him, I am going to give you a penalty on this one because it is a small space and it is difficult to get up to him. Or uh, you can give me a dexterity roll to see if you can get through without issue. If you do, you'll be able to take... Let's go with a throw. Um, and then I might just say something depending on if I miss or not. So right. I pick up my snow globe, I hurl it, and it is a rip roaring sail strike that shadows <laughs> on the wall. Um, I realize the situation. I, I, I roll, I go, phone's in the kitchen, call the someone po- call the police, <laughs> I'll yell again as I stand here. Um, I, have a, I have a skill of 35 in rifle shotgun. I have been trained. Mm-hmm above oh. base would it be reasonable to say that upstairs i have like under my bed a case with a disassembled gun in it just to add chaos to the situation absolutely and i also I yell, even i've got a gun upstairs then i will case. i will even let you like you throw it you yell and your intent is to go upstairs and get that gun i will allow you to like begin the process of making your way up there brilliant uh, i i i i start moving, you did not move. for someone else to interrupt me and go i'm gonna for yell it. jeez wesley we don't need a gun call the police <laughs> um so can i get an intent for everyone with this next round what are you planning on doing am i still under the guy, the Kenneth. No, he did get sort of off. lifted bodily. So uh, if Fantastic. you can imagine, like he was on top of you, Fred got his arms up and under the guy's like uh, shoulders and wrenched him back. Um, and in the tussle, uh, Kenneth was able to get a chunk of uh, Fred's well, forearm and get out of the way and is kind of like crouched down in the darkened part of the hallway away from the living room. So you are able to scrabble up for sure. If I know I'm the quickest, I'm going to go for the phone. Call the police. Great. You are running towards the phone uh, in the kitchen. Wonderful. I'm going to try and kick uh, uh, Kenneth into like a linen closet or the bath. Like, like get him into a door that we can then jam it closed and hold it shut so that he can't mm-hmm. bite anyone. And we can just, uh, ideally a linen, linen closet would be like perfect. No windows, just something we can jam in. And then between Eloise and myself can hold him inside until the until help arrives. Great. First aid. First aid. Uh, you I'm, got I'm, bit. I've got, I've got above base in brawl. You'll bite me again. My house. I'm probably instinctually helping as well. So I, I'm, I'm pressing on the linen cupboard at, at the same. I, I don't actually go for the weapon. Okay, so you're not going for the weapon. The three of you are making a, a move to like going towards Kenneth. Yep. Annabelle mm-hmm. is the only one that is running to call the police. Right. So as the three, uh, as Annabelle, you, you dart off trying to find the phone. Um, the three of you make your way to, like towards Kenneth and right, you can Ken. see that there is like he's still chewing on that bit of bit of meat that he got off your off your bones. Um oh. uh and like looks for all intents and purposes like he is going to lunge again. He like lifts oh. himself up a little uh off his haunches and as he goes to launch himself at you, the back door slams open, three cracks of a gunshot <gasps> fire out, and what? Kenneth face plants in front Ooh. of you. Oh like, my god. As blood starts to like pool underneath him. Is this you a see... sanity check situation? You know what? Yeah, actually, I haven't, I haven't gotten you to make a sanity roll yet. Oh, Go ahead and everyone, crack. just give me a sanity roll for whatever the fuck just happened. Good. 
<laughs> Maybe. Start low and lower. Oh, Annabelle. Tough. Oh, you're in the kitchen. All right. So we have successes like, from Eloise and Annabelle. Annabelle was in the kitchen. You can hear the gunshots and you hear a thud, but you are not present. Um, someone just died. So I am going to get Eloise, even though you succeeded. I'm going to get you to take just a little tickle. That tracks, that tracks, that tracks. For the two of you that failed, you take a default. Hell yeah. You are small town people. This is a lot. <laughs> jeepers. I, I jeepers. Four. Oh, jeepers. <laughs> oh, one what the, the F. Gets another one of my snow globe collections and I'm splattered with blood and snow globe fluid going, oh, oh, oh <laughs> man. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Fred and Wesley. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> in this moment, Fred, you are clearly like having a small panic attack. Oh, Wesley, geez. are you sort of in a bit of shock? Is that what I'm Yeah, I kind of uh, like uh, my. I look up towards the door just in shock. Eloise, probably you're the only one with like any kind. Like a man just died, but you are a little bit more like aware um, and able yeah. to sort of. Act. Um, move, act in this situation. Um, what are you doing? I'm going to continue with first aid, but now it's for Kenneth. Like I, I don't know that he's dead. I'm not. Yeah. A, I'm not a doctor, so I think the instinct is going to be to kneel down next to him and see if there's like, you... just be like, oh my god, this man is bleeding out on the floor. Yep. Uh, you dive down. Um, I am not. Players aware. Make... There is nothing I can do. Actually, go ahead. Go ahead and make a roll not. for me. Doesn't matter. You're not sure whether your skills are insufficient or this man was not able uh, to be helped, but one way or the other, it is very, uh, very clear um, that this man is uh, is dead. Uh, at yeah. least one of the bullets seems to have lodged itself in his spine, um, and there's a few moments of like him twitching a little before he cool. slumps and is, is uh, flat. Uh, quiet on the ground cool, 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 um cool. Yeah, stepping through the doorway you see a large figure uh, again i'm just gonna pull up a sheet for myself um a large uh figure in sort of like a uh like rough looking in a police uniform um and uh the three of you who are here uh recognize uh, the deputy Stanley Alexander uh, stepping in huh. uh, with a gun that is he's, he's lowering and then putting back in a holster um, I'm saying well thank god you alright? Uh, no! <laughs> no! 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 We're not we're not we're not alright we're not alright at all um uh, uh he got bit. Oh, man. Ah. Oh, it really stings, too. Oh, he really got me. Is Deputy, do you know what happened here? Do you know what? He, he was acting mad. He was wild. He came in and he bit me. He, yeah, he well, attacked me in the hallway. He stalked me right the way down like some kind of animal. I'm sorry to hear that. We, we had some uh, calls that uh, Mr. McCurdy was uh, wandering around the town causing trouble and being a keeping an eye out for him. So uh, he, just uh, he, lucky that we were able to, to find him here and, and get to him before he did anything worse. Yeah. I'm uh, sorry for the intrusion. Annabelle, you hear this and you recognize the voice. Everyone around town knows uh, the, the deputy, uh, Alexander. Deputy Alexander. Last I think that might be the last name. Stanley Alexander. What a twist. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> what a twist. Um, um, this this man is uh, not a huge amount older than you. Uh, he's sort of in his late 20s, early 30s. Um, but he is solidly built uh, and definitely has the air of someone who is used to being in charge. Do I respect him? Sure. <laughs> what's, his, what, what, what's his stance on, on women's suffrage? Should we should, should we roll his I don't know um, roll for roll political liberalism. political progressiveness luck I guess probably uh, it, any other stat we suggest would probably That's be true. offensive. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I would say that as with oh. many situations uh, that Deputy Alexander gets involved in, um, he is... He's on the he side of the law. the law. Hmm. And I would well, say that very few of you would have interacted with him outside of his sort of professional capacity. You all know him. He is, he's known around the town. Um, but, uh, yeah, he... Regardless, that I is think not something today... I, can answer for you. I think all today right. we might be a little bit relieved yeah, that, the, uh, the... that the... That's um, true. That the man is no longer biting, that Kenneth is no longer biting people. That's probably, that's probably where we're at today. That's true. Um... I mean, I, I, Annabelle probably would have uh, probably would have come up against him in the sense that uh, she has a First Amendment right to assembly, um, mm -hmm. and perhaps oh, yes. he uh, may not be as aware of that right as she is. <laughs> but yep, yep, that's fine. Uh, it's cool if he's here to help. What exactly happened? Why, why was he trying to kill us? How? how did you know he was here? And how did you arrive so quick? We're on the outskirts of town, aren't we? Is he going to be okay? I point at the dead man. <laughs> we'll have uh, someone come along and deal with that in a moment. You were already on the way here, weren't you? Yes. I said we received reports that Mr. McCurdy was uh, causing problems. Oh, God, did he bite anyone else? Not that I'm aware of. Oh, but thank God! He did seem to be making some trouble. Uh, Praise the Lord. Well, I'm just grateful if it was going to be anyone. Know, it was me. Mr. Shank, you, the hospital is uh, closed at these hours, but I, I recommend you get that taken a look at. That looks nasty. Oh, it's you know what? It, it's it's beginning to feel better. Actually, it could have been a lot worse. First you know, <laughs> it could have. It, I... Oh, it could have been a lot better. Oh, it could have been a lot better. Oh. First aid. Uh, yeah, you absolutely <laughs> can go please. ahead and make a first aid roll for sure. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not. Ah! No. no. <laughs> Right. Took a bigger um, swig than I thought I did earlier. I'm a little shaky. With a bit of time, you can absolutely like bandage this up, and you will be able to like it, you'll you'll regain. Assuming you get a night's sleep, you'll regain. I think it's a hit point, so yeah, it'll it'll begin to heal. It is, it is a flesh wound. It is just a large amount of flesh. Yeah, no, it sucks. Um, it might. But yeah, uh, Deputy Alexander uh, sort of says, "Well, I'm uh, glad that we got here in time to make sure nothing was worse." But uh, I hope um, I hope this didn't ruin a pleasant social encounter too much. As I said, we'll have someone come around and collect the oh. uh, individual in question in not too long a time, if you don't mind uh, holding on, but. I'll get a rug in the meantime. Thank you, Mr. Frost. That's a mighty kind of you. Do we know what McCurdy did? It's a small town. He was a shelf stalker. Shelf stalker. Mm. Oh. Shelf stalker. He's just a normal. He was a. He was a friendly enough fella. I mean, this is. I mean, this would be out of character for anyone, and I understand a bad day. <laughs> I've been having quite the time myself recently, but this seems a little extreme. You said there were warnings from other folks in town? Uh, reports of uh, someone wandering around causing a ruckus. I wasn't too sure exactly who it was, but uh, the description matched. And, uh... It appears uh, Mr. McCurdy here was the reason for those calls. Ah, Mr. Shank, I, I hope you're not suggesting I've got anything to worry about about you now. Oh, no, no, not at all, Deputy. No, no, no. I'm having, I mean, look, <laughs> all things considered, he could have, he could have gotten my dominant hand. So, you know, it's, it's fine. It's really, it's fine. It's bandaged now. I think, I think a, a warm tea and off to bed, <laughs> uh, shortly. Yes, your, uh, your house is closer in town, isn't it? It is it is it is although i you know what i won't bore you with the details it's uh it'll all be arranged soon just quick meeting with mr bingham and we'll be all sorted oh so, 
Yes. Yes, of course. Yes, of course, Mr. Bingham. Wonderful man. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have uh, the rest of my shift to be getting on with. Okay, um, we we'll... Don't mind too much. We'll deal with this, and uh, then you can go on and continue with your eat. Um, he's the deputy, right? What's the sheriff's <clears throat> kind of deal? With the sher- Is it kind of weird that the deputy rocked up here solo and straight shot a guy? Because it feels a little weird. I mean... That depends on what you think about the American judicial system as a whole. Um, Fred's a pretty optimistic guy. He's kind of probe, not murder. Uh, you are sits. aware. Uh, the, the, the sheriff's name is Martin Kavanaugh. Yep. Um, he is... Um, you, you don't see him around as much. He is the person that runs the police department. So mm -hmm. uh, it is not unusual that the sheriff... Uh, so the the deputy would be out. Take point. Um, the the sheriff does run a lot of, of things. It's also uh, later on in the day, <clears throat> while the sheriff uh, does you know occasionally is on shift uh, during the evening. It is often the the deputy or even some of the like constables uh, that are more likely to be on later shifts. Okay. So in this situation, you would say no. It's not particularly odd. Um, that the sheriff is here and shooting a man in cold blood. That is a bit odd. But then, and then leaving the body with us. That man was attacking us. you. So, yeah. you know, okay. six and one, half a dozen, the other. Oh, look. Um, you're welcome to, to give me a psychology roll if you if you have something specific you want to glean. But... I, I, I might hit a small one. I think I'm just, I think also like leaving the body is a little weird. Like also wearing yeah. no, well, you know, we're not in a great state, so on and so forth. I think Fred's a bit... Yeah, I'll, I'll 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 hit you with a big a big P. I'm I can give you a, a bonus down that one. I'm also kind of looking at him a little side long. It's a little weird that he my showed psychology. up and just straight up killed a man. My psychology fully I sucks, will... so <laughs> well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna roll because unless... I think I'll try to see what's okay. going on. But unless the two of you want to be in conversation talking about this, maybe we do it retroactively. It's a little hard to get on like a mental check. I might be like, like after um, he leaves, like, we talk to one another look, and go. But... That was a little yeah. weird. But I'm yeah. definitely, yeah, I'm definitely keen to roll for it because, yeah. You may want you're to... welcome to make a check now and you'll get, okay. like, in the moment information or you can make one retroactively and you might just get more of a vibe. I'm going to make one now. Just, I think just... we both kind of look up at him because if I'm kneeling next yeah. to you doing first You're also first both welcome to make your yeah. own checks. Yeah. I will do yeah. just that. I think we both look up at him and... Oh, I'm actually so hey. close. I am going to spend <laughs> two points of luck. Nice. Because we're yeah. in that kind of zone, so... I think so. Let me do that. As I said, it's not unusual that the sheriff is here, and his demeanor doesn't seem to be out of the ordinary, but that is odd. Yeah. Someone was just shot for attacking a bunch of people. You would expect his demeanor to be, I mean, stoic, like sure, reaction. but yeah. it is... Mm. You know, stoicism, yes. This there, There's something beyond just the stoicism of one's duty. Like, yeah. he knew he was going to have to shoot him. Maybe. He went to it pretty quick. What you, yeah, what like... you take out of that, but there is there is clearly, you know, a, a dispassionate mm. kind of uh, expression on his face. Um, the other thing that you you glean from this is that he is rather done with this conversation. Uh, he has wished you all a pleasant evening and seems to have considered that uh, his duty. Well, well, I'll probably speak up and say, uh, Deputy, where would you like us to attend the station tomorrow for an interview? <clears throat> you are welcome to come down to the station and give your statements whenever it's so... Uh... Is, uh, is appropriate in your calendars. Um, although I, I don't know that we'll need anything too uh, complicated, it's quite clear that this man got in through and he looks sort of back towards the room where the, the window is open uh, and uh, got ingress through an open window and decided to uh, attack a few members of the community and was in no fit state to be talked down, so... 
this man he, he's lived with he's lived in this community for 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 decades we all know him this man it's kenneth it's ken from the goat grocery store uh, we're not looking I'm to rock just... the boat deputy we're, we're just curious is all i <laughs> just you're just asking in a, in a friendly manner when you've uh when you've been doing this job a while, you see all manner of sides of folks, and sometimes they just snap. Which is unfortunate, of course, but nothing the four fine folks such as yourself need to worry about any longer. We'll I have someone come and collect the body shortly. I suggest that you, uh, Go and get yourselves a nice nip or something to calm those nerves, and then enjoy the rest of your evening. He, like, Eloise is wondering if that was a dig. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no way to have tell, you, but... Have you gotten, in, like, drunk enough to be caught for doing this? No, 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 no. No, but it's just the paranoia. Like, there's always something of... in the back of your mind in a small I... town where you're like, do people know? Like, you're trying to hide something, you're, like, pretty sure that you're hiding I... it really well, but... There's always something in the back of your mind about how much people know. I, I'm 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 going to be a very annoying sort of that guy for a second with a with a with a niche 1920s thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, I always I always forget when I'm running that it's that it's prohibition. Prohibition. Um, and, uh, so and, and obviously, it would have been totally standard for a lot of particularly small town coughs to be like ignoring it but that might have been like a nice thing can we read into that at all is that like he was trying he, he like implying either that sort of like flippantly like don't worry don't worry about that worry part about of it, war. Yeah. was he trying to be friendly he says something like appropriately he meant tea and like now and and, and it, he was just being flat you know go ahead and make a psychology roll Okay. I, I was wondering if I could sneak in with a, a law roll to see if he's doing things by the book or if he's doing things not by the book, but how things are generally done, or if he's like not, uh, not, not, not doing things as they should be. I, I, I also, if that's Dang. all right, I might not make a psychology <laughs> roll. I have another thing I, I, I wanted, yeah. wanted to be doing. I just still got curious. Get your gun, that. Jim. Sure. Get, go get your gun. <laughs> gun. You are unclear what that was in in reference to um i will say that the statement stands he did say that right. whether you take it to mean he understands Perfect. the situation and understands what sometimes people need or whether it is truly that he does not kind of care um it is unclear uh annabelle while you are you've definitely had some some run-ins with the law not in any kind of criminal way but definitely in the uh you know making sure your right to protest is is maintained um but this is not something you are as familiar with the sort of procedures around a death That's um so unfortunately no you're, you're not entirely sure as i said everything you've got it's not unusual for the, the sheriff to be here in this situation it's just a couple of things that kind of give you a little bit of a raised eyebrow but at this point he is going to sort of nod say you have a good evening now and is gonna head back out uh he is going to walk through the house and exit through the front door going through the back is a little and you can see that there is like a police vehicle out the front uh that he gets into with one of his constables uh who is has been sitting in the side of the drive off yes Wesley. the one thing i want to do which i might flag now depending if you want to have a conversation first or maybe we roll it into the same scene is uh i said i go to get a rug i'll come back like carrying the rug and if the conversation was going to keep going i was going to like drift past in the background but uh weirdly I actually have a decent amount of outdoorsy skills that's why i live mm -hmm. a little bit a little bit outside of the city by like a mile um can i make a track check around the outskirts to go to the house i just want to see if that was indeed he was stalking around and like everything that has been said lines up sure go if, ahead if, and, if uh... we want to get into a conversation before we go out or if people want we can do ha have it while we're walking uh yeah absolutely you're you're welcome to go outside and, and do a bit of a uh, check you've, you've got a flashlight that you can grab uh not an issue uh what are the remaining three of you doing oh. uh... I think I think I'm I'm mentally evaluating whether everybody can fit in my house because obviously obviously we cannot stay here with a body in the hallway that is That's weird. Not... 
I think maybe yeah, I you were told that someone my... would come and collect the body. Soon. Yeah, but um, just okay. emotionally, I'm not really sure if mm-hmm. if um, if my pal would if my pals are keen to hang out in a house where someone's just died. Not stoked about it. Uh, yeah. To be honest, Annabelle's probably more keen to get home to her, yeah. her elderly mother who ah. is on her own with, uh, you know, strange people. Not strange people, dearly, dear friends and uh, and neighbours who were murdering people. That's <laughs> fun. Yeah. So you're planning to head home? Uh, I think I'd better head. Uh, yeah, oh, I, think, I think I'm going to go see the Reverend. I think that's what Eloise wants to do. At this late in the it is later in the evening so is that the plan for this evening you know, or, or go oh, yes. home and then <clears throat> head i think uh, it'll be the attempt whether or not it succeeds i think i think that's her that's the focus is you know sure. need some time in prayer maybe the reverend mm-hmm. is the just church. Some disturbing but uh, uh, yeah i, I the church it's will be church on the way home yeah absolutely you can absolutely go to the church and the church uh, like while like it is a small town it is understandable that some people occasionally like want that moment of, of prayer and silence later in the evening. So the church doors, like the main hall, uh, there is you're able to gain access to that. Um, it is not locked overnight, uh, but like you know the the donation box and stuff are, are sort of put away. Anything of like value uh, that isn't you know literally part of the walls is away. But you you'd be able to go uh, and light a candle of uh, make a, a few prayers so absolutely you can you can head back yeah. in the direction uh, of the church in town back to this point i probably i might actually be avoiding the reverend but i would like to go to church and light a candle and um, um Fred? I, I might stay with i might stay here with you wesley and help out i think also fred had in the back of his eyes he had a a a, 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 a an ulterior motive he was lightly feeling out who might be willing to let him crash on the old sofa <laughs> for a couple of wh- couple of days while he gets his feet back on so i think i kind of try to go like uh wesley like maybe i stay here and we i can help with you know if the body needs to to go over yeah. and it'll be like old times back when we were in school uh that sounds good i because because still holding the rug because i i don't know if i could sleep here by myself now you have a dead body here yeah you know yeah. Yeah, no, me neither. It's 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 uncomfortable. Um, yeah, it's like we're both homeless, right? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, hey, homeless together, hey, buddy. So you know, it's it's yeah. it's you know, it's it's on the up. Um, but, but pop the maybe pop the rug back, and um, why don't <laughs> I why don't I put on a cup, put on put on the mug, huh? The 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 kettle rather. The mug comes after the kettle. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. When Fred goes to the couch and unbuttons his little briefcase, it's already got like toothbrush, <laughs> one pair of pajamas. Uh, he was kind of hoping this might, well, not the murder, not the dead body, but he was hoping to crash. Uh, <clears throat> I'll settle about Lovely. getting comfortable. You, you've so... got like a bunch of gear in there to artificially create a disaster, like something to slash a tire. Be like, oh, no, oh no, God, no, on. Fred's a nice guy, he's an optimist. He was just prepared for a positive, he just assumed that one of his friends would be happy to have him stay there for a while. Manifestation, yeah. it's the way to That's be. That's right, good vibes, baby. Um, So just to confirm, uh, Fred, you're going to stay with Wesley yes. and Annabelle and Eloise, you are going to, at this point, leave. Yep. Okay. Um. So, uh Fred and so Wesley, did you want to go ahead and give me that track roll uh first and foremost? Yes. Uh so I I I I, I probably dither around until I'm I'm calm, speak with uh uh sorry, Bab so bad nasty with Fred for a little bit. Um, and Fred. then I will head outside and get scared and come back in. <laughs> <laughs> um you there are like footprints around outside in as much as like people were moving out there but who's and when and like you can't glean anything from them um but what i will say is you know you are as you're like coming back inside after having a look around you can hear the kind of low clanking rumble of an old pickup um making its way towards your house Uh, right um it's probably been maybe like 20, 30 minutes uh, since the sheriff left. You've had time to sort of have a bit of a chat, calm your nerves, go outside, have a bit of a look around, 
decide you don't want to be out there anymore. Um, and as you come back inside, you hear the, the sound of the the engine turning off. I, uh, and a few moments later, you hear a... Can, can I jump in beforehand? If, I, if, I, if I'm jump. coming back in, maybe I hear it, assuming I have time. If, if it's a time pressure thing, I, I won't. But uh, you know, I hear it echoing. I do live a little out of town, so you can hear things some miles around out here. Yes. Uh, it's, I, I come back in, and it just occurs to me, oh, I look down at the body and step forward and... Can I actually just quickly search it? Sure, absolutely. Uh, go ahead and what are you trying to ascertain? I don't think I entirely know. Uh, Wesley, quickly, actually not very good at a bank. Like I said, most of my skills are sort of like weirdly in outdoorsiness, but from a perspective of like really enthusiastic hobbyist, I think that I'm sort of stuck in life, kind of drifting, not really knowing where I'm going. Uh, and something feels just right. And I'm like, I should I should check this. This this is a moment in which uh, I, I need to I, I need to step up and do something a little out of the ordinary. <laughs> okay. Um so you're just doing a general search of the body? I, I check the pockets. Mm -hmm. I... Also, he broke into your house. Like, he might have taken some of your shit. Like, yeah, he might have so been in here to go your through, your, through your wallet or whatever. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and, and I, I justify that as I'm going. And so, like, yeah, yeah, I'm making sure he hasn't stolen anything. I check the pockets. I check for, like, I don't know. I do, like, a very surface level check of, like, does he have a, I don't know, a, 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 a like, a giant wound that we weren't aware of or something like uh, uh, uh or, or um you know are you checking for bite marks yeah i probably check for bite marks i think i think it's primarily pockets first then bite marks if you want to tear me in success i think i think the bite marks are a secondary thought go ahead and make a spot hidden roll for me you'll still get information one way or the other but sure. let's see just how sure. good you are unfortunately not unless you want to see what i'm doing and help me out with a bonus die M I S S, -S I S S I P I. Um, I think Fred's kind of just hopping around, yeah, chilling. I, I'm probably staying away from the body where possible. If you come and talk to me, I'm happy to. No, uh, no. In which case, I, I probably don't. I'm a bit embarrassed about what I'm doing. So, so I, I will come afterwards. I will say, I, I, I was going to ask if I know just while he's doing. What I am doing is I'm thinking about do I know any of Kenneth's family? Like, what's his connections to? Because my plan is tomorrow morning I'll probably go and touch him with his family and see how they're doing. Mm -hmm. I've also got yeah. a phone if you want to call tonight. Oh, yeah. Actually, if I could... Yeah, yeah, 100%, if, if that's reasonable. Um, sure. I don't really know what kind of, like, role I would give you to determine whether you know family uh, or whether you just know it. I guess you could look through a phone book. Or I, I've got a charm skill. It could be a retroactive, like, how well I know the folks in the area. I probably know them, but it's whether I mm. think I'm whether on, like, call them up basis. Whether the one time you cut their hair, they were friendly enough with you that you might be able to call them. I mean, we're a small town. I kind of like yeah. am the barber, my impression. Like, I think I probably had a lot of people come and go. Well, actually, no, it's probably big enough that there's probably another couple. I'm just. <laughs> I'm gonna say, um, you go ahead and, and give me. You can either do a library use role to like check the phone book and see if like that jogs your memory, oh. or you're welcome to do a retroactive charm role to see if like you interacted with someone. Uh, well, you know, uh, hair. Oh, I'll do, I'll, I'll hit you with it. Um, so you kind of go through your memory banks and you're like, mm, I haven't, outside of Kenneth himself, you're not, you're not sure that there are other members of his immediate family, like with the same surname. Um, you do know that he has an elderly mother although she would go to, uh, I believe it's Lottie's salon, I need to double check the name, but there is a salon in town. Oh, uh, um, okay, so I wouldn't the barber, uh, yeah. That she would, she would go to, or more specifically be taken to, because she is quite old um, and uh, has recently sort of moved into whatever the equivalent of aged care is, whether she's at home with sort of a couple of people coming in to check on her. Uh, Kenneth would not be the only person who who sort of looked after her, although perhaps was the only person that was providing funds. Yeah. Um, but yes, you do know that he has, or had, <laughs> has uh, a very elderly mother. Uh, not sure that she is in a state that would be all that helpful, though. 
Well, in that case, I probably have the opposite concern. Now I'm worried that no one's going to check in on it. And I think I am just saying, as I'm heading out and Wesley's searching, I'm saying, we, we need to make sure we check in on, on his mother tomorrow morning. She's, she's, she's elderly. She doesn't really have anyone looking out for her. We'll drop in, maybe, in the morning. If, if you've got a car and you can drive us in. Sorry, muted because I was typing a fun fact about bars. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely, uh, yeah, yeah, I can, I can do that. Easy sure. Easy. Um, so uh, to to go through the spot hidden result, uh, Wesley, you're you're going through Canis pockets. Um, Excellent. You don't find anything uh, in them. Um, there is none of your belongings. Uh, there is like nothing that he's you know picked up from from elsewhere um there is no wallet there's no personal belongings they're, they're empty pockets um what you sort of as you're like looking him over and and kind of like getting a bit more curious you, you know looking around you don't see any bite marks um what you miss is quite a lot of angry purplish like bruises mm. that dot uh, that sort of are like along one side of his back um probably just assume they're from the fight or something and, and you just... don't see them you don't oh, see okay, them at cool. all yeah, you miss sweet. these this is so you miss the fact that this man is quite heavily bruised uh yep. and scratched um you do see that he is covered in dirt he's got dirt under his fingernails the 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 blood from the chunk of flesh he pulled out of uh fred's arm um is sort of like starting to congeal and and crust might've a been, little on his face that have been missing yeah, um, for a it, while mm. um but his and, and like you can see the red stains uh along with sort of again dirt or grime in sort of the, the, his teeth in between his teeth um but yes you you miss the bruising uh, i probably pull back for a second and and i'm a little rueful oh he about smells what terrible I... should also be yeah, clear yeah, that the entire time you're like oh i don't part of the reason you don't find a lot of this is he smells real bad and you do not want to be in close proximity to yeah. this man for too long i i pull back and i'm yeah i get getting away i want to be here but still sort of a bit overcome by i lost a lot of sanity i i, I will like I kind of just try to, as a last gesture, straighten him up a bit. Like I pull his clothes just a little tighter. And as a as a final thing, I think I reach out and I try to do the pass hand across eyes to close them, and it doesn't work. And I try it like two or three. Uh, yeah, and I eventually just yeah walk off. Um. So I'll say at this point that the knock comes at the door. Um. Which of you on? You answer it. Yeah. Um, I'll be nearby. So outside. Uh, you can see outside there is a sort of medium height, kind of narrow featured fellow um, with facial hair that would remind you of uh, one of the three musketeers if that musketeer was regularly dunked in an animal trough. <laughs> um, he smells like manure and hay uh, and generally farmyard. Uh, you know this man to be Freddie Jensen. There's. Hey. Hello. Hey. Hey, Hello, Freddy. Frost. I understand you got a uh, unwanted uh, visitor. I got to take care of. I uh, yeah. Um, right here. Uh, he steps inside and leaves a couple of muddy boot prints on uh, your carpet in the, in the sort of living area. I, I, I would normally oh, be annoyed, but I don't even register at this point with all the blood on the floor. Ah, <laughs> oh, hey, Freddy. Uh, is the oh. evening? It's the worst of the Freds. Hello. How you doing, Shane? <laughs> well, hey, uh, both pretty good in different ways, right? Um, did, did, did the deputy send you? Yeah. You got a uh, unwanted guest. Yeah, I got to get rid of him. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, it's Kenneth, you know, from uh, in town. The used to stack shelves. Yeah, I know who Kenneth is. Yeah. He's dead. He's still dead. You want, you want him in your living room? Oh, no, no, no. I was just, I mean, it's just, unfortunately, I was, I wasn't sure what denomination he was. Where are you going to bury him? Oh, will you take him into the church? Something like that. 
Okay, um, well, we were probably going to head see his mother in the in the evening. Maybe um, if you could hold That's him nice and... nice see you. Isn't that sweet, going to see his old mum? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we're just, just trying to... Ease the ease the process a little. Um, maybe we'll we'll tell her that she can begin preparations for the funeral, or tell her whatever you want. It's not my problem. Okay. Wait. Wh- wh- I, I hate. Roland. To... Look. It calls Ooh. back, and you see a younger, uh, younger oh, wow. sort of like kind of mousier looking kid, late teens, jump out. Um, grabs what looks like some kind of top from the back of this this car and and begins to to walk inside, going, like, yes, Miss Jensen. Um, where? And Jensen just like points down the hall over there. Oh, uh. that's where the, you know. Um, and they proceed. He, he uh, Roland proceeds to walk in and start like bundling Kenneth's body up in this like top. Um, Look, uh... you can also see uh, that he doesn't he doesn't really hide it. Um, he's also going through his pockets. Oh, well, you don't tell me how to cut hair, but, uh, I hate to step on your toes here, but... I don't! So I I suggest you don't tell me how to do my job, eh, Freddy boy? (laughs) Okay, all right, okay, uh, yeah, hey, well, look, uh, I was actually just putting the kettle on, uh, so why don't I go and make us all, uh, all of something while you men do your work, and I, I'll step back towards the kitchen. Is this... You got something stronger than tea? I <laughs> don't know what you're he, implying. He like, looks around. <laughs> he looks. He looks around. Do you keep any like sort of bottles of anything? Not necessarily like out in the, in open, but like it's in. You know, you've got a living room. Do you have anything? Uh, I think I bought around? a bottle of liquor once at, because I thought it was cool, <laughs> and I had a sip, and I went gross, and it's been in the top cupboard since then. So not visible. No. <laughs> okay. Um. So he just like looks around. You're not really sure what he's looking for, but he sort of has a, has a look around your living room. And goes, "Plums frost." Guess working at the bank has its uh, benefits, eh? Is, is the best way to get a place like this is to open an account with a uh, good interest. Um, sorry. Uh, is I this drop a, I drop a mug in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> is is this your job though? Right. Um, you said you're just doing your job, picking up bodies. You've done this before. Deputy Alexander asked me to do it, and I said, all right. Okay. Great. No problem with that? Why would I? No, I'm just... I thought, I thought you were a like, farmer, mostly. He, you, you're in... You're kind of in a bit of shock. He walks over and, like, pats your cheek and goes, good. And then, like, you know, looks down the hall and goes, Roland, you're done. And Roland goes, just a minute. Um, okay. And then you sort of look around and, and kind of eye up the place a little well um there's no one else wandering around is there no one else we should expect oh if there is i'm sure the deputy will sort them out okay good um thanks then uh freddy i uh hope you have a good rest of your night you too uh and you hear roland go all right and they um like he he walks down the hall towards the the body and they both like hoik it up this is a grown man so it does require two people uh and you see um they they both of them start moving through the living area again uh just just carrying this bundle um back through uh, and we'll proceed to exit and rather roughly like toss the body into the back of the Ooh. the truck um as uh like roland gets in uh the the passenger seat and freddie jumps in the front seems to salute and go you have a nice night now um can you go ahead and make a spot hidden check for me sure i wonder if this is suspicious we would know if our rolls turned around yeah <laughs> no, this, that whoa, is my whoa, 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 I, I haven't succeeded at all yet but that's <laughs> on par for old wesley yep. Um, you fully don't notice. Uh, so as you, as he leaves, like what, you, you'll have like a little sort of entry hall table. Uh, what's the most valuable or interesting <laughs> thing about that hall table? Have you got like a really nice letter opener? Have you got like, you know, some kind of, you know, do you keep like a, a change of- jar filled with coins? <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> just, just just money. Yeah. It would be hilarious if it just took my loose change jar. I think that would be <laughs> so funny. <laughs> just took $30 yeah, fully, worth just, of quarters. You- <laughs> 
<laughs> in, 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 in 1920s money, that's, that's like four thousand. Like by down payment. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would absolutely say like uh, so you got like a small a small little thing of of change and you know just yeah. for my amusement a nice letter opener uh, right. you won't see uh, those two things disappear uh, into the the jacket or pockets of Freddie Jensen but they do um, you might notice a couple of days later that those are missing maybe you think you misplaced them but uh, they're definitely gone the rigging of gunshots in my ears is so loud I can't hear the yeah um, so they they bundle uh, Kenneth's body into the um, the truck, uh, and as it as the engine kicks into life and they they drive off, um, you don't need a roll to know that that vehicle's headed in the wrong direction to be headed back into town. Oh yeah. Ooh. It's, uh, really wrong it, here. I've... You know that uh, just for context, Freddie Jensen uh is uh like owns a farm uh, yeah like on the outskirts of town uh it is like um El uh, eloise uh, may know of freddie uh, given that she requires some form of uh wheat or right. barley to do her thing botanicals um and for all his faults freddie is a good farmer hmm uh relatively good with you know the old animal husbandry etc etc um but yes going into town versus going in the direction of say somewhere else on the outskirts different directions and he's definitely not going in the direction towards town um i think just as we on. leave it i think we'll say that you know let's maybe check with the deputy in the yeah. morning when we go yeah. to meet with uh kenna's mother um See what all that was about. Makes sense to me. We'll leave you two there for the minute, uh, and we'll cross uh, over to Eloise. Uh, you were heading in the direction of the church. Mm -hmm. um, you make your way through the town. It is coming on, uh, you know, a bit later on in the evening. Um, there's a, a handful of people wandering around, uh, you know, still going about a few things, maybe going out and, and getting some dinner. Uh, later on, but uh, you make your way back um, to the local church. There are three. I can't remember the name of the specific one that you go to off the top of my head, but it's the one that Reverend uh, Fitzgerald leads. Well, someone can find the name. Maybe I will at some point, but it's a church. There are three of them. The only one relevant currently is this one. Yeah. Um, so you head back uh, in the direction of the church. As I said, the, the door is open. Uh, although it is dim inside, there's a couple of like candles or, or sort of uh, small lights that are turned on. Uh, what is what is your aim? Um, just to quietly go in, light a candle for dear Kenneth. Uh, say a prayer for my for my friends who are out of work, out of home. Seem to be struggling, um, and generally just do that and then go home. I think I am. I think I'm avoiding the preacher at this point. I don't think I want to speak to him on my own. His sermon really bothered me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not um, a particularly good conversationalist or particularly brave. That's fair. Uh, I'm, I'm sneaky, not like I'm, I'm a, I'm a kind of slink around, not very, the only time that I'm confident speaking is to like 13 year olds about chemistry. <laughs> Lovely. Perfect. So. Um, I will say uh, it is the Methodist Episcopal Church is mm -hmm. uh, the one that you that are tracks. in. Uh -huh. um, are you? So you're trying not to be not to draw attention to yourself. Yeah, I, I, yes. I mean, yeah, I'd rather just to, not. Just to kind of see how how good you are at moving around without yeah. being noticed. pretty bad tonight. Pretty bad tonight. I'm kind of shaken up. Yeah, I just so did is, die. That is understandable and reasonable. So you are, um, you know. Uh, kneeling down, saying a small prayer, lighting a candle, um, and you hear the sound of sort of um, shuffling kind of footsteps that you would recognise um, as sort of the gate uh, of the reverend um, who seems to uh, likewise be sort of, you know, tidying up in the church for the evening. Again, not unusual. The reverend would be in his own church. Um, you know, uh, comes out of a side room, perhaps he was popping some things away, uh, you know, in, in the safe area. Um, and he sees you uh, and, and starts to, to make his way in your direction. Uh, good evening. 
but uh, nice to see you. Yes. Um, Good evening, Reverend. Um, I was just finishing up, uh, saying a little prayer uh, for some friends of mine. Good evening. Yeah. Good day. Uh, he he nods. I mean, he will sort of uh, as you go to leave. Gonna like try and be shuffling around him, like like not obviously oh, he's, trying he's not, to he's leave. He's not but, between like, you shuffling. and the door. He's coming from the other end. So the door is like you are. There's, I'm there's just no... take, like taking few, some steps back to the yeah. door, like I'm leaving. I'm I'm gonna get out of here. I'm I'm done. I'm good. You see, he sort of like squints at you a little, uh, kind of trying to like maybe size you, like read you and size up what what's going on. Something on your mind, my child. No. But yes, actually, yes, yes, yes. Actually, there is something on my mind, uh, Reverend. Um, you know, why don't poor. You come and the poor Kenneth no. say... tonight was out of sorts. Uh, showed up at uh, at my friend's house, and and you, just... you may need you may need to provide some love and support to your congregation in the coming days uh, of the type that we are most used to from you. Uh, support and love, Reverend. Support and love. Um, kindness, uh, acceptance for all, uh, even those who may not uh, have the strength of faith to show up every week or embrace every one of your sermons, I think I think there may be call in the coming days to, uh, to support everyone. Are you speaking quite generally, or are you trying to get across to him that, speaking like, quite you quite know generally, no, generally? no, I'm just speaking quite generally. Just you know, kind of, kind of a dig at the sermon that I didn't particularly like. Kind of a, we may need, we may need the old Reverend back. Kind of vibes. Hmm. Um, he goes to like pat you on the arm, in sort of reassuring way. Do you let him? Oh yeah, I'm I'm gonna let him. I'm, I'm, but I'm just kind of I'm shuffling towards the door. Um, he he takes your arm and, and sort of pats. It. Ah, yes. Mr. M Kenneth McCurdy. Good soul. What a shame. What do you mean, what a shame? I said he was out of sorts. Indeed. It's a shame that he's out of sorts. I don't want that for any member of the community. It's important that we all come together and support one another, as you say. Love and kindness yeah. important yes yes indeed and um i know you eloise you're one who's always embraced the teachings of the lord so i don't think you need to be concerned about not resonating with Sermons with the, the the sermons, the, the conversations I'm to the Lord as the Lord as I am devoted to everyone in this community as the Lord directs us to be to be Romans twelve ten be devoted to one another in love honor one another above yourselves that is why I love the Lord as He directs us to love each other. Indeed, and I, you and I are in so much agreement on all of that. Everyone deserves to be loved, cherished, and valued for what it is that they can provide. Pats your arm again. In service to the Lord. Well, some people may, may be able to provide a little less in the coming days, and we need to be there for them, too. Kenneth is unfortunately no longer with us, and the circumstances under which he passed were traumatic. Oh, I am sorry. This town has troubles. He does indeed. He does indeed. But that is why we are here, to try and smooth as many of those troubles as we can. To give everyone comfort, knowing 
knowing their place in the world, stand, knowing where they fit in. Well, they fit in right here, all of them. I'll see you at mass. Of course, Eloise, you have a good night. Oh, talking of messages, parables, and such thing. Are you familiar with the parable of the farmer? Mark? Uh, probably, yes. Well, maybe take another look at that one. Hmm? Of course, Father. God be with you, my child, and he begins shuffles yeah. away. Yeah, make a make a break for the door. Uh, you exit and make your way back home, where your uh, not quite as elderly as Kenneth, but elderly mother is waiting for you. She she smiles as you come in sleepily. Um, she's she's had her tea and biscuits uh for the evening you you set her up with something to to eat earlier this morning so she had something to warm up oh um, yes no i put it all in the fridge it's just a casserole we just reheated it. it's fine she's listening to her to her stories she is on uh i believe a relatively new invention there's the the wireless radio mm -hmm. radio is, is come into fashion uh relatively recently i'm a big fan um, of science so i would have um, one of those you absolutely would uh can you make a split head and check for me Yes, yes, I can. Finally. This, you walk in and you, and you uh, see your mother and she's, she's happily listening away to, to her stories. The radio is very clear. Like it, it's usually quite crackly, but there's there's sort of like a real a real clarity to it that mm. you, you hear and you have a look and there's a couple of sort of extra um, antennae or, or, or dials or something. It looks like a, a modification might have been made to the to the radio. My mind kind of goes to whoever our uh, physics teacher is, thinking that um, he's been tinkering again. <laughs> um. So you, teacher. Whether it's listed or not, we can. <laughs> but that that say. would be given that I live next to the school and I'm in the sciences science department. My my immediate thought would be there is either those no dang one... kids in the science <laughs> club or <laughs> nerds. So, uh, nothing it, nothing springs to mind nerds. from the current uh, list of professors. But uh, as you sort of like going oh, physics and that kind of thing, you you sort of like think about. Mrs. Brady, who was your old school teacher when you were at school, uh, who has since retired, uh, you um, in part stepped into to her shoes as the uh, predominant science teacher. Um, while you're interested in chemistry, you do teach a fair whack of the different sciences because yeah. for the most part, you, you're teaching elementary level uh, yeah. students, uh, maybe a handful of the older it's ones, like, but most people in this town. It's like middle school, middle school sciences in a small town, so I'm, I'm, I'm into the chemistry, but like, you gotta do all of it. Yeah. There's, there's, there are a handful of, of the students who like go on to do further education, but a lot of them do end up, uh, leaving after middle school to go and work in the lumber yard or the cannery yeah. or something like that. There is that, that's sort of the, the main job, the bank um you know a bank takes on apprentices and teaches them you know the accounting skills and that kind of stuff so anyone with a sort of pension for mathematics might might go and do something like that but you think about miss brady and, and sort of she was always kind of interested um in the the newer kind of technologies um and and that that just sort of pops into your head mm. yeah. i might have to speak to her about this and i don't know how it got into my house and i'm not super Happy with things being in houses when you don't expect them to be. Probably less so than usual. I'm gonna make a little sketch of it in a little in a in a in a you know pad next to next to the door. Um, just put that in my pocket in my coat pocket and and just you know I'm not gonna take it because you know my mother needs it for her stories. But I'm I'm a little I'm a little perturbed by by anything being in my house that I didn't put there. Uh, Especially today. Well, with that, you leave your mother to her stories and and pop yourself upstairs. Say, I'm uh, gonna read that 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 parable that uh that the the, the good father oh, recommended. Yeah. Okay. 
we'll get back to that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Annabelle, you yeah. head off uh, back in the... Oh, sorry, Eloise doesn't live with her mother. That's Annabelle. My mistake. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say... What a twist. That... <sighs> it's fine. I was, you can also I was have an elderly mother say... who lives in your house. Whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Mother. I would say that, you know what? She probably doesn't live with me full time. Um but she's just hanging out most like she just comes she, over a lot you know what she specifically comes around because you've got one of these radios and she exactly to listen to her story she's just come around uh you you knew she was coming around this evening you still left her some stuff in the fridge because you knew you were you know yeah actually after, she's after her, she comes over sometime. a lot you know she's um, she's worried about me i'm i'm in my i'm nearly 30 and i'm still single <laughs> and, and, and becoming a nun these be. days isn't nearly as cool as it used to be <laughs> exactly I don't. I She's, great. Everyone. She knows. I'm, she knows I'm a godly woman, but she is concerned because I hang out with that Annabelle still, and you know I went and got my teaching credentials, and I'm into the sciences, and she is worried. She is concerned for my soul. She shouldn't be. Still very pious, but she does not approve of some of my life choices. So she's here a lot. <laughs> I will say your mother will then, you know, listening to our story, she's got a little like set of rosary beads. Mm. She is not of the same denomination. She is. She goes to the Catholic oh. Church in town. Oh. Um, but she she accepts. That you know, her daughter, you know, is going is, to hell. <laughs> is is she's exploring concerned. other kind of other variations of, of the Lord's word, uh, but you know, hopes in her heart of hearts that you will eventually realize that the one true word is that of the of Catholicism. Mm, uh, of it course. is it is a little point of occasional contention between you two. You get into some fun little religious debates Ooh, every yeah. now and again, you know, especially around. Kind of Feminism and activism. I firmly believe that women should be able to preach. Women should be able to be, to yeah. be leading that's that sermons. Annabelle. <laughs> that's, and that's you know that's I think that's where Annabelle and I really do get along. Is the you know I I'm I'm behind the the suffrage the, the suffragette movement because I I I think that I would be I would be excellent on the pulpit, um, and I think I should have that right. Yeah. Yeah, I can take or lead the rest honestly, but that's the one. In my head, canon very strained relationship oh, she's yeah. not asleep she's got one eye cracked open and the rosary is very deliberate she's holding it going oh she's yeah trying to just show <laughs> off to you the whole yeah bit. and i'm like glancing from the radio the this new invention of science to her and back again i'm like mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll leave you there for the moment as you as you go upstairs and i don't want to open your bible um annabelle i wish we had a radio way. <laughs> Reddit so you rating make your way 10. back across town. Um, you live sort of closer towards uh, in, in the center of town uh, in your family home. Uh, it is a little bit of a of a point of chagrin uh, that you haven't managed to sort of get to your own place yet. But the life of an activist is difficult. That's right. And uh, finding solid employment in a small country town for a woman as go-getting and talented as you, a little bit hard. That's it. Well, I thought it was easy. I was, I was waiting tables for many years until, uh, until as of today. But I think, uh, as well, I think uh, Annabelle's background um, with, the, with the points of mechanical repair she has, I think she probably worked in a factory during the war, which is oh, what yeah. a lot of women had to do because a lot of the men were, were overseas serving. Absolutely. So you would be familiar potentially with uh, probably the cannery would be the the most um, the most obvious I'll take uh, it. local uh, business that would have needed additional hands during the war because you know, food is important you canned food especially so when you're trying to ration and things like that so um, absolutely uh, very happy to say that that, that is where your uh, employment came for a little while. However, of course, when everyone returned, the men did. came back and ruined everything. They did, everything. and they took back their jobs. And from that point, you had to find something a little bit, um, a little bit different. And the the waiting job was about all that was around. But as you walk back through the town um, towards your mother's house, family home. Um, you can see that there are, you know, most of the, the shops have closed up for the evening, but um, the diner, the Elmer Steakhouse, the, the lights are still on as it would be, you know, the end of, of the, the dinner and, and people would be tidying up. You can see what looks to be the dregs of customers walking out, um, chatting amongst themselves, uh, seeming pleased uh, with their meal mm. that you can, um, in, you can see. That it uh, that the lights are on. A twinge. Inside. A twinge of regret 
Um, seeing that, do you know what? Since I'm going past anyway, if there is a chance that uh, Mr. Elmer himself is in, um, I'd be inclined to take the opportunity to have the conversation now about my abrupt termination and my last paycheck. Uh, so I don't know. I, I, I probably wouldn't. Door? I probably wouldn't burst to... in. Um, trying to see so if you that... can spot him first. I don't want to be spotted by Felix first. I want to find out if Mr. Elmer is there first, the owner. Go ahead and make a stealth roll for me, though. Oh, I did just take out a few points in stealth because I didn't think Annabelle would have it. Sir. So... Okay, having some points in stealth may not help you. <laughs> no. Did you know me? No. Ah, uh, no. Okay. Um, so you sort of like look around and, and sort of like try and look through the front windows trying to like stay down as much as you can but it, it doesn't take very long for the head waiter felix to see uh your sort of head popping up you note that he clocks you um and he doesn't make any move to to come in your direction but you are very aware that you have been spotted excellent well i can't let that lie uh he slammed the door earlier in, in my face earlier today um and i won't uh I'm going to make him do it again if he wants to. I'm going to walk in, uh, quickly fish yeah. around my pocket for the uh, two and a half dimes that I have and mm -hmm. say, uh, I'm a paying customer and I would like to be served. <laughs> um, so you, you walk in and you sort of announce that uh, Felix, you see, turns and, and walks to, uh, sort of like takes a step in your direction and goes, I am sorry, we are closed for this evening. I disagree. You have customers here. They are still drinking their coffee, and I would like a cup of coffee. Thank you. But then, Miss Hearn, if you would like to take a seat, preferably by the window, we do need to start cleaning for tomorrow's service. We will bring you a cup of coffee. Thank you. And I will not take it. the seat suggested. I'll um, go by the, the kind of the manager's office, the owner's office. Uh, and uh, go to sit as close to that as possible while also trying to find out if Mr. Elmer is in. How are you intending on doing that? Uh, if the door is open, I will look in the door and it is not open. I guess I get a knock on the door. I don't know. Maybe um, he's got like a hat. He's got a hat. He always wears this stupid ass bowler hat that I've always hated mm -hmm. and he always hangs it on the, on the coat rack near his office door. How about that? That works. Um, you do not see a bowler hat. Actually, no, you do see a bowler hat by the door. Yes. Uh, the door <laughs> is closed and the, the, the like Venetian blinds are like angled down so you can't see into the office itself. All right. Um, well, while, while Felix is distracted, I will bang on that door. Lovely. Uh, Felix is not distracted. Felix is watching you. Uh, well... He has got one of the other... Uh, actually, yeah, he's got someone else who you're... In terms of materiality to the story and really anything, their name does not matter. You are familiar with them, but they are someone else uh, who um, has previously, like, is is one of the wait staff, but maybe like doesn't work on shift with you as often. But uh, someone else goes and gets the coffee. Um, he is in the process of like making sure that people finish up and are in there and are leaving. That's fine. So as long as he's in the middle of something else, I uh I'm 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 going to Mr. Elmer's office. He is going to intercept you before you get to the door and go, excuse me. He can try. He will. Dodge. <laughs> no. He will <sighs> intercept you. You have walked in. <sighs> he has seen you. You failed your stealth. Yeah. He'll that's get fine. between you and the door and say, Miss Hearn, would you like to take a seat and we will bring you your coffee? I would love you to bring my coffee. I just have to see Mr. Elmer. Thank you. I'll be sitting over there. Mr. Elmer is not available Oops. at the moment. Sorry, I just accidentally rolled additional skill two, which I have zero in, but there's my <laughs> nine four done. Uh, that's fine. I will just let him know I am here and I can wait. Mr. I am Elmer. letting him know I am here. I'm not taking no for an answer. I'm just like pushing past him when I get the chance. Uh, and if he wants to, you know, initiate a physical confrontation, he's welcome to. He Where won't. I? What he will say is, Miss Hearn, you are a paying customer for the length of time it takes you to drink a coffee, but you are not an employee of this place anymore. So if you are going to cause issues, 
I will call the police. I have not even started drinking my coffee. I do not have my coffee in hand. Uh, at this point, uh, uh, the waiter like comes <laughs> up and hands the coffee to you with sort of like almost an apologetic look, sort <laughs> of, uh, hands it to you and then heads uh, sort of back to, to check on and like uh, to take the payment for the, the last lot of customers who are in. Thank you. Uh, and now that I'm paying customer, I think I shall sit over here and again, sit right next to the door of the office. And as soon as Felix has got his back turned, I'm just going to knock on that door. <laughs> um, he... Is he being weird about this? Is he like really not wanting me to, to go in there or is he just being the dickhead I happen to know he is? Psychology roll. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Just a, a final roll is my latest in my line of zero successful rolls this session. <sighs> Incredible. Hell Stop. yeah. Do you remember my, the last scenario <laughs> we played, the, the session ended with a fumble of mine. Amazing. So essentially what you've done is given your game plan away to him. He's fully aware that that is what you intend to do. You intend to That's stay. Um, so essentially he is not planning on letting you out of his sight. Oh, if a fumble uh, means he's calling the police, that's fine. Not yet, but definitely, yet. like, he is not letting you out of his sight, and as soon as that last lot of customers are done, like, you try and eke out your coffee drinking for as long as you can, but at a certain point you do need to, like, finish your cup of coffee, um, and, and no, as soon as you do so, um, he will... You don't finish your coffee, you just leave it there? All right. Uh, if it's getting near and near it, and I get the impression he's about to toss me out, I'm just going to jump up and dart towards the door and bang on it and say, "Mr. Elmer, I need to see you." And <laughs> again, he can try to stop me. Yeah, you bang on the door and say, "Mr. Elmer, I need to see you." It's true. Do I need to roll for that? No. It's Mr. Elmer, it's Annabelle. Another beat. Mr. Annabelle, there's a, there's, there's 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 a bit of understanding out here in the uh, in the in the in the main area, and we need you to resolve it. It is your duty as owner and manager of this establishment. And Mr. Elmer, if you oh. don't come out now, I'm afraid I will have to contact the Department of Labor about this. <laughs> you hear a snort behind you of what sounds like dismissive laughter. Oh. I'm opening the door. The door is locked. I'm opening the door. Okay. <laughs> How are you I don't know what I thought that would accomplish. Saying just, I'm mean, just saying it again when you said the door was locked. But I thought you it might can help. Certainly try. What are you trying? Um. You are going to you are going to cause property damage. No. Or you'd like to commit a uh, larceny. <laughs> what um, particular flavor? Yeah. Did you say there was windows in here? The blinds are, and blinds are drawn. But Mr. Elmer is in there. He's got his hat in the, on the on the on the coat rack. You gave me that. Do you want to make a listen roll? Sure, that's a good idea. With my twenty listen. Don't. Get the one hundred. Oh dear. Don't know. You hear Felix give that kind of like you know dismissive, derisive laugh, uh, and that is it. You don't hear anything from inside the office. Um, whether it's because there is nothing to hear or because you just can't hear it, you're not sure, but there does not seem to be any movement from inside. After uh, a moment, Felix says you burn yourself out with your babbling, and then says, if you are quite finished, Miss Hearn, we are closed. I'd like to leave a note on the desk, and you will not stop me from doing so. You open this door, I leave a note and letter for Mr. Elmer, and I leave, and we never have to see each other again. That would be and really if well you're and good. Not and if you're not agreeable to this, then perhaps I will be going to the police. First, I happen to have had a confrontation with them already this evening. Um, not a confrontation, but uh, I happen to made 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 made, made, uh, made an acquaintance of Deputy Alexander, and he's expecting to see me tomorrow. And in fact, we have a meeting. And if you want that meeting to not include any mention of my employment situation and the questionable legality of such, I think you better open the door and let me leave a note. 
And I hope that's intimidating enough to roll an intimidation check. Bless you, Jackson. You're trying very hard. <laughs> I'm trying you are so hard. You are threatening something. He steps forwards uh, towards you, just just one step, and goes, "Ten. You two are not employed here anymore, so I do not need to assist you in trespassing on this property. And if you so wish to take a complaint to the police about not being allowed to break and enter into a business, then by all means do so. But uh, I don't think that Deputy Alexander will give toots what you have to say. So I suggest you take your pretty smile, your stupid head, and you leave. But I think Mr. Elmer would ha want me to would want to hear what I have to say. And I think if he was in there, he'd open Good the door. Evening, and Mrs. if I think Frank? that you killed him, he's dead. <laughs> that's why he's not opening the door. And that's what the police are going to hear tomorrow. Good evening. Evening, Miss Herm. Uh, Doesn't change his mind? No. Well, then I'm done. <laughs> um, Thanks, <have> I... dice. <laughs> Go ahead and make a spot hidden for me. Oh, Ooh. no. You spot a See corpse. if you can find your <laughs> dignity <laughs> on the floor. I do. I spot do. the last crumb of <laughs> luck that I had so, this entire session. As you... You don't really have a choice at this point. You are going to have to leave. But as you do... Uh, that's an opinion that he's wanting to hold, <laughs> yes. But go on. As you exit, and the door is firmly closed and locked behind you, uh, is great. You look around again through the window and just like through the window and then through the like porthole window of the doors that, that open into the kitchen. You swear. Yeah. You catch like the, yeah. the side of Elmer's face. Yeah. Standing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like moving around. Upright. He moves moving past. Around. Yeah. Alive. It, it might it might be someone else, but you're pretty familiar with with yeah. the, what what Mr. Elmer looks like. So you know you're like, wait, what what is he doing in the kitchen? That is odd. <laughs> and am I right in my assumption that uh you know maybe he's not the best boss, but he's a reasonable person? Am I right in thinking it's out yeah, of character absolutely. for him to not want to see me? Um, that is a little harder. Felix is the head waiter. He is the one who like predominantly sort of runs the day-to-day -day operations mm -hmm. of the restaurant. But not being able to see him at all. Yeah, I'll give you and that. The fact it I is just a kicked up odd. a I kicked up a big fuss and he would have heard me kick up the fuss and he still didn't come out. It's, it is loud in the kitchen, so whether or like and behind doors. So you did make a fuss, but like it's a it's a decent sized establishment. It's not given that he would have heard you. That is not an assumption I want you to make specifically uh, uh, but well, it is not but, I, I, but i'm welcome to make it i think you're fine you I'm are entitled welcome to, to make, make assumptions absolutely Excellent. um what is more interesting because mm -hmm. you you see something and you're like wait is that maybe i'm not sure your spot hidden isn't good enough to tell you for certain but you're like maybe what okay. you do see uh yep. is felix um fish something out of his pocket and mm -hmm. enter the manager's office and close the door behind him. okay mm -hmm. I just don't like it, but I think I am beat your right. for now. So, you head be home very different to another when, aging uh, mother. When I'm elected uh, mother. Set yourself down. And the last thing we'll leave with uh, for today's session is Eloise, as you, as you open your Bible and you flick through uh, to... I, I'm not going to tell you the exact passage. I didn't look it up. I did look up the parable. I didn't look up. But Mark, in the book of Mark, parable of the farmer. Who sows seeds? Some of those seeds, well, they you know, they fall and they are picked up by birds and they're flown off. And, and there are seeds that fall uh, on the sort of good, rich soil and they develop roots and they grow and they flourish. There's a real sense that like those are the ones that you want to work on. And there are some seeds that fall on stony ground, which burst into flower but with no roots they wither and die but 
not to say they don't have use. They do provide nutrients. Fertilizer for those that flourish. There's a real sense, at least in this reading, as you, as you look through it and you piece sort of what the Reverend has said, what you're reading here, that one should not mourn those that the seeds that fall on stony ground or the lessons that fall on deaf ears for those that the time one could spend trying to save those is better spent uplifting those who already already understand and I am unsurprised given the couple of things that he slipped into our conversation um I, yeah, and plus the sermon, I'm, I'm unsurprised and deeply disappointed, honestly. Hmm. Well, with that ringing in your mind... Poppycock, I say, and close bed. <laughs> the four of you find your way to bed. We will end the session there for the moment, and we will pick up next week. Oh, oh well, yeah, you said the thing. You yeah. can't, uh, can't dig your fingers a little bit more into the mystery of what on earth is going on in Stowell. What the Something's H not right. <laughs> what the what what the, what the, what the F? heck? Oh, it's wrong. Thank yeah, you I so know, much, I everyone. Uh, oh, thank for you for coming along on this wild journey. Uh, thank you, Dave. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jackson. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Chat. Uh, I don't know. Thank you, okay, Kepa. I don't know. That's, that's my sign off. Have a have a great heckin' rest of whatever time zone you're in. Goodbye. Good week. Thanks, everyone.